This is the tiny cast iron skillet that I got in a novelty chocolate brownie set in a post Christmas sale. I mentioned in the review video that it might be fun to make the smallest possible full English breakfast, so today we're going to see exactly how much fun it really was. We should begin with my definition of a full English breakfast because opinions vary on this matter. Mine is going to be sausage, bacon, egg, mushrooms, black pudding, white pudding or more specifically hogs pudding, baked beans, tomatoes, potatoes, a slice of fried bread and a cup of tea. Multiples of some of those are preferred by many but space is at a premium here so some of them will be represented by only one piece today. Some of these components are also controversial, but I'll talk about that as we get to them in turn. Starting with the sausages then. Sausages that are thinner in diameter are typically called chipolatas in the UK. The name apparently has nothing to do with the shape, but originally refers to the inclusion of onions in the recipe. But chipolatas these days are just thin sausages with approximately the same ingredients as the thicker examples. Names for things are weird. This sausage is a bit too big for the presentation of this tiny breakfast, so I shortened it and rolled it out a little bit thinner. Smoked streaky bacon rashers, too big to use whole, so I'll trim out a piece that's representative of the whole. Now, bacon is one of the controversial items. Traditionalists will probably argue that it should be back bacon or middle bacon, and I've no reason to disagree with that, except it isn't so easy to miniaturise a streaky bacon, so I'm using streaky. It turns out I had two rashers stuck together, they separated when I turned them. When the bacon and sausages were done, I took them out of the pan and I'll make my fried bread in the residual fat. Now, if only they made tiny loaves of bread. Oh, they do. They're called rolls. A slice at an angle out of the corner of the roll yields a piece that plausibly resembles a grown-up slice of bread. Fried bread is another contended item. Some people say it should be toast. Personally, if I'm having toast with a full English, I want it on the side with butter and marmalade. And I'll also have the fried slice on the plate with the other things. Anyway, I fried my bread to a crisp, then took it out onto a kitchen paper towel to soak off any excess grease. Black pudding, that is blood sausage. Some people just don't like it. I really do, and for me, it's the one item that, if missing, disqualifies the breakfast from being even considered to be a full English. This black pudding was already sliced when I bought it. The slices are a bit big, so I cut them in half and then trimmed out a smaller, roughly disc-shaped piece. None of these trimmings are going to waste, in case you're wondering. We'll use them later in the video. Now, hogs pudding. Really, just another kind of sausage. And similar things to this exist, like the Irish white pudding, which I also really like. I think hogs pudding is optional in a full English, but I'm opting to include it. Same trimming process here to yield a smaller circle that fits the theme. As those were frying, I rummaged for the smallest mushroom in the pack and halved it. This I will fry alongside. Then the pudding slices come out of the pan. Oh wait, we probably need this. The disambiguation of the term pudding in the UK. I hope that helped. Anyway, the pudding slices come out of the pan, then I'll finish the mushrooms with a little bit of butter. Now, the potatoes. Again, controversy abounds, and on this particular item my position is not a neutral one. For me, it should be fried slices of actual potato. Hash browns are nice, and if you like them better, then more power to you. But to me, a full English has to have fried potato slices. If I was making the full-scale version of this with thicker slices, I might poach them in a little bit of water to cook them through, then fry them once that water's boiled dry. But for these little slices, they'll just cook through from frying in the leftover fat from the puddings, and the residual butter, which is now browned butter. We need a tomato. For me, this needs to be fried halves of fresh tomato. There are those who prefer a warmed, cooked plum tomato from a can. I don't think that's horrible, but I prefer a fresh tomato, which in this case is going to be a cherry tomato, cut side down to start off, then it won't fall apart when it's turned later. This breakfast needs a fried egg, which will be a quail egg to try to maintain the sense of scale. I cracked it into a small container, then gently added it to the pan. As it fried, I returned the other items back to the pan so they could warm through again. And it's very nearly ready. There's just one item of food missing, baked beans. I felt like baked beans from a can might look the wrong size in this tiny arrangement, so earlier I set about making my own. Starting with the smallest beans I could find, these are called brown peas. I soaked them overnight, then in the morning I chopped and fried a couple of onions and a clove of garlic. Once those had softened and begun to caramelise, I put them with a can of tomatoes and blended them together. In my pressure cooker I added the beans, the tomato and onion mix, some sweet paprika, some smoked paprika, a stock cube which gives us both salt and some nice savoury flavours, a little bit of ground mace and about a tablespoonful of sugar, a bit more water, a mix and then this goes on the legume setting to pressure cook for half an hour. I had started that earlier and so it was just done in time for addition to the tiny full English. And there's just space for a little spoonful of miniature baked beans right there. Off to the table. One thing that's definitely missing here is a cup of tea. I had intended to include one but that quail egg cooked really fast and because I also had to stop and take the thumbnail picture and so on, the tea was omitted in the service of time. 
Shame, but I wasn't going to let this breakfast go cold. So how much fun was this tiny breakfast really? Well, it turns out that like the so-called fun sized version of chocolate bars, fun mostly ends at the idea. A full English breakfast is a lovely thing, I think, but it's just an assembly of different items. And having smaller amounts of those items really only diminishes the enjoyment. I almost forgot brown sauce. It was delicious, don't get me wrong, but it was about four mouthfuls and it left me just wishing I'd made the full size version, which I think would have actually been easier to do. I think we can do better than this, so tomorrow I'm going to aim higher and see if we can sort of reimagine it all as a sandwich. I have in the past made sandwiches out of a full English breakfast. Trying to cram as many as possible of the different items into a sandwich can be messy. So I thought it might be interesting to try to make a sort of full English breakfast muffin and try to make it presentable. Not sure I will succeed in that endeavor, but we can try. I'm going to use both of my tiny pans for this one. I suppose I could just do this in pochette rings in a single larger pan, but that's not what this video is about, is it? To begin, I'll take the skins off three of these sausages, then cut the black pudding and hog's pudding into a little dice and mix it into the sausage meat, spreading it out to form a sort of patty. Now I can cook them all together and hopefully it should stay as one layer in the sandwich. While that's cooking, I'll fry off some rashers of bacon that I've trimmed so they'll more or less fit in the pan once they shrink a little bit. While the bacon cooks, I'll slice a potato with the mandolin side of my grater. Awkward with the camera in the way, I'll toss these slices in flour with some dried sage. And when the bacon is cooked and out of that pan, carefully lay the potatoes inside a pochette ring. Heat goes right down now because I need this to cook through before the outside of it burns. When the sausage patty is cooked, I lifted it up and put some thin sliced mushrooms underneath. They'll only take a moment to cook. Last of all, I cut a big circle of bread. I didn't have a cutter big enough, so I made this one from a tin can. I cut a hole in the bread, setting the cooked sausage aside for a moment. I fried the bread on one side and while that was frying, cracked two quail eggs. They're more tricky to crack than hen's eggs, not only because of their fiddly little size, but because the membrane under the shell is a bit tougher. Need to pierce it with a knife. Anyway, I flipped the fried bread, added the quail eggs into the hole, and this is called eggy in the basket, by the way. I flipped the potato thing, then took off the ring. I still have loads of beans from the batch I made yesterday, so those are warmed in a small bowl just in the microwave. Now, let's assemble it. A muffin, which I split with a fork and lightly toasted. A little dab of butter on the muffin halves, not too much, as all these fillings are pretty loaded with fat of their own. A layer of baked beans, then the three sausage patty and the mushrooms. A little bit of brown sauce. My potato slice rosti. Rashes of bacon. Eggy in the basket. That egg yolk again is a bit firmer than I'd like. Some black pepper. And this time just some thin slices of tomato that are not cooked at all. A bit of salt, then the top half of the muffin. And here it is, the full English breakfast muffin. Again, time pressure did not permit a moment to get the kettle on for a cup of tea. More's the shame. I could have made one at the end, but I wanted to bite into this while it's still warm. Sorry, no cross-section, because I felt like that would just make it fall apart when I tried to bite it, although that's just about to happen anyway. This sandwich is too tall to take a proper bite out of, but I gave it my best shot. It's good. Really good. A full English breakfast in every bite. This is way more satisfying to eat than yesterday's miniature full English. However, having done this once, I don't think I'll try it again, at least not in tiny pans. More about that after this next bit, which is going to be hopefully a bit less frantic in the making. Finely diced onion and red pepper into the pan with a little bit of olive oil and fry until softened. While that's happening, I've got a tomato that's been sitting in boiling water for five minutes. Chop up some garlic and peel the tomato. Losing that tough in a core. Tomatoes in the winter aren't great, so when I put the garlic in the pan, I'll help it along with a bit of tomato puree. Fry that for a bit, then some chili flakes, then the chopped tomato and a little bit of water to loosen it up. While that's simmering, I'll crack three of the quail eggs into little dishes. These are supposed to be tea light holders, by the way, but I find them very useful for preparing small quantities of ingredients and spices. The mixture in the pan is starting to look like it's cooked now, so I make little holes in it and tip in the eggs. I'm supposed to cover this up now, but I don't have a lid to fit. I thought about using this bowl, but I think it will cause the pan contents to spill, so I just draped it with a bit of foil. Meanwhile, a slice of this lovely malted multi-seed loaf, which I will toast lightly. Now, the quail eggs tricked me again. The whites don't seem to go as white as hen's eggs when they're cooked, so I thought we still had a way to go, but those eggs are actually completely cooked. I'm supposed to add parsley at this point, but I don't have any, and coriander, but I don't like it. So I'll just dress these with some chives, frozen fresh rather than dried. And there it is, mini shakshuka, sort of. Definitely cooked the eggs too far. I would have preferred a semi-liquid yolk, but quail eggs are really tricky, or rather, I'm just unfamiliar with them. Nevertheless, this was a tasty little breakfast, with a slight emphasis on the little. The main issue is that these pans seem to be a scale model of a larger skillet rather than something manufactured to be useful at this size. 
As a result, they're too shallow. They could have done with being twice this deep. For the mini shakshuka, it only just barely worked without drying out. So what have we learned from all of this? Cooked breakfast is good? Now, I already knew that. I think the conclusion is that these tiny pans, cute as they are, are not much use for anything serious. Some people have suggested toasting spices in them, which seems like a decent idea, but trying to actually cook something in these pans is just a bit too difficult to be much fun. Baking things in the oven might be a thing, but there aren't many things that can be done with these pans that wouldn't be just easier in a bigger one. They were useful to me when I wanted to dry some wood ear mushrooms by the fire, so I suppose there is that. One thing I definitely would do again is that three sausage patty. It did fall apart a little bit when I ate it, but having the coarse chunks of black pudding and hog's pudding integrated into a really nice tasty sausage patty was very good. Enough heterogeneity of texture and flavour to be distinctive, but the three things go together very well. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you can think of something that might work better in these pans. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.